Gotham Knights episode 12, and I can't believe they've done it again. You're pure evil. And you're just another man taking credit for a woman's work. At this point, it's impressive. This is now the third time. Another case of a man taking credit for a woman's work? The other one was in Batman, and it got such backlash, they cut it out of the show. I'm not about to let a man take credit for a woman's work. But Gotham Knights must have realized they only had one series, and so decided to go down in a blaze of glory. And 12 episodes in, I'm here for it. Let's get stuck in. We start in the mayoral office. He's won his campaign, but no one should look that happy at the sight of some balloons. It's also a bit weird to celebrate your campaign in the same room where you almost got subjected to a bomb attack. But this is Gotham. I guess they're just happy they don't have to fight any real criminals. When the worst villains on your street are the Gotham Knights, you'd probably feel pretty safe. Isn't it nice when the good guy wins? I wouldn't know. Hollywood doesn't have any morality, so the good guy never wins anymore. <laughs> it's always like, I'm an evil person, but I'm shades of grey. Meanwhile, though, we're sledgehammering open some rock, dragging coffins out of walls. And I've always wondered, if something is sealed in a wall covered in stone, how do the cobwebs get there? Not only how do the spiders get into a rock face, but how do the flies get in there to feed the spiders? So confused. We flip between the two scenes. He's giving a speech about, I've overcome the lies and corruption of my rivals. Meanwhile, they're dragging out the bodies so that someone could do a home science experiment on them. You know, in the writer's room, someone's like, how can we make science look complicated? Let's get one of those glass spinny things. That'll be cool. Does it do anything? No. I mean, we could just pour the liquid down the tube, but it always looks better if we make it do a little spinny thing on the way down. These are people that are entertained by balloons. No wonder they want to play Ring Around the Roses in a science experiment. But somehow, they melt the invincible rock. I don't mind if it's an invincible space rock, but if you're going to call it that, it should be invincible or indestructible, I suppose. The people in the walls, though, are talons. They're being given the space rock to bring them back to life. Meanwhile, his speech is going mental. Remember, they've got two episodes left. The writers aren't going to miss this opportunity to piss on your strawberries. United in the promise of tradition and ancestry. Yep, that's right, folks. Let's make sure we get a guy that everybody knows is evil and then have him talk about tradition and ancestry. Everything in the past is bad. Everything in the future as we move into a new era is good. You know, that fancy new future where we break the glass ceiling and revive an army of assassins. Because in 2023, this is the worst thing that can happen. You're just another man taking credit for a woman's work. Remember, resurrecting the virtues of our past, that's a bad thing. Then to resurrect the virtues of our past. Leave those virtues over there. This is 2023. The last thing we want now is virtue. If it's not filthy enough, it would make an adult star go dizzy and have to steady themselves on the sofa. I'm not interested. It's just not modern enough. And dun dun dun. It's his wife bringing him back from the dead because we need more women in STEM. Even the evil ones which are resurrecting assassins and taking over the world. Especially if they're taking over the world. Back in the tower now with the Insufferable League, Blondie's decided if you've got an ancient window next to you, you should probably just lean on it, see if it collapses. And to be honest, I'm here for it. Do your worst, let's see what happens. But no, her bit on the sides come up the stairs. I don't know if you took cream or- Well, as we found out, she does take cream. It just doesn't do much for her. Better thing she'd take sushi in her coffee. I'm sure it's perfect. I know you just woke up, love, but there's no reason to lie to her. There is a difference between thank you for the coffee and it's perfect. No one has ever made a cup of coffee this amazing before. Whatever happened to the middle ground? Maybe we could settle on at least it's not poison, love. Uh, judging by your belfry bed head, you were able to get some sleep. Thought you would have known. You were the one that caused it. Not much. I don't know if it's the uh, broken couch or... You. <laughs> Both my parents disowning me in one fell swoop. To be fair, you disowned them. You went into their house, complained at them that they weren't doing what you wanted, and then left. I mean, apart from the mother's habit, I actually don't know what you're complaining about. <sighs> Last night was rough. Oh, sorry, love. I think that's about a 2 out of 10. Or a 10 out of 10. I guess it depends how she means it. It's like if someone calls it awful. Now, it means really bad. But before, it used to mean full of awe. So, you know, if you get insulted, just pretend you come from the 18th century. You'll be fine. It's just... Now I'm not sure what's left. The crippling and security of knowing that your first major TV role was Gotham Knights. Just spitballing here. Sober light of day and all. At this point, love, I wouldn't have blamed you if you'd been day drinking making this show. Something to take the edge off. <laughs> But they start hearing a weird beeping. We cut downstairs, who don't hear the beeping for some reason. This show has no idea how sound works. That's why the sound is quieter for them, even though they're closer to it. But they're talking about nothing in particular and hear the noise as well. So they try to track down the sound while forgetting how sound works. But before that incredulous display, we're off to Juala. You need a new name to go with your new look. Is that how that works? Darling, I just changed my t-shirt. I need to be called Steve. I've heard of you do this as often as I change my underpants, but I didn't think that someone took it seriously. It is weird how she 
she doesn't blink at the suggestion, though. Oh, yeah, change my top. Of course I need a new name. This is common sense. Siobhan. I mean, if you're not suggesting the actual name of the actress, then you are missing a trick. How do you not have a line going, Olivia? I think you look like an Olivia. Shiv. On the other hand, you want to name me after a DIY prison weapon? Why? Because you're cheap and easy to get a hold of? Broken and only used by criminals? I mean, where, where are we going with this? Sharp and dangerous? That's not where I thought you were going with that one. I mean, knife, dagger, they've all got the same thing, but Shiv has specific connotations attached. But since Joella's hooked up with her mom as a character, I don't like her anymore. She's gone from happy-go-lucky, fun, great actor that's carrying the series to I'm just a whiny brat like everybody else. Pick a new name. We got a whole new story ahead of us, baby girl. A lot of people just dye their air, love. Seems like a lot of effort to me. I can't be bothered to remember one of your names, let alone two of of them. Welcome to one of the most pathetic scenes in television history. These people are in high school and don't know that sound gets louder the closer you are to it. That's why they're looking in multiple locations in the same room when something is beeping at them. <laughs> oh, should I check over here? No, we check over here. Is it the same volume in all of these locations? Apparently, yes. Walk around the room, see where it gets louder. Go towards that place. That's too complicated. Look at Blondie. Shall I check in this tray? Maybe this tray's beeping at me. That's weird, Blondie, because it all also seems to be beeping from this desk. How do the writers not know how sound works, and why didn't any of the actors go, this is stupid? So they all look in different locations, because apparently they're all deaf. Are we sure Duelle didn't leave us a farewell time bomb? I mean, if she did, you deserve it at this point. Can we please just go to the source of the audio? I'm under the impression you're not looking for anything at the moment. Duelle is still our friend. No, she's your fugitive with benefits. Aren't you all fugitives with benefits? You're literally Blondie's fugitive with benefits. I would have thought Duelle's benefit was leaving them. Well, she did get stuck with her mom, I suppose, so... We got you killed. Everyone shut up! Finally, someone has worked out how audio works. How are we supposed to track down audio if you're all screaming? And so, when she has actual silence and realizes, <gasps> volume! She f goes straight to the source of the audio because it's making noise. Mobile phones play audio so you can track them down when you've lost them, specifically because it's so easy to find. But it does require at least 45 IQ, so it's a stretch at best for our heroes. Strangely though, she finds an LCD screen. I don't think it's a bomb. No, it's an LCD screen. Even if it was a bomb, what's it gonna blow up? A cup of soup. And what is it? I love his self-confidence. I'm never gonna work out what it is. Can you tell me? I'm so terrible at everything, I'm not even gonna bother looking at it and trying to work it out myself. But it seems to be a low battery warning. But they realize it's the low battery warning for the lapel pin they wore into the Court of Owls, which means it was never destroyed, and they make a plan to get it back. They get in contact with Robin about it, who seems to have only been hired for nine episodes. By the way, we only want you for nine, but if we could film some scenes in your bedroom, we could just splice into the other three. It will make it sound like you've been commissioned for the entire series. Did you just run out of budget to have all your actors in the shows or something? <laughs> or just nine episodes in realized, I want to get off this sinking ship. But Blondie realizes if the camera's alive, then the text was fake which means that Brody's in trouble and explains why she hasn't seen him. She didn't care that she hadn't seen him until he could do something for her. But remember, she was happy for him to go to prison for five years to cover up for her, so... Another case of a man taking credit for a woman's work? Only caring about herself is standard procedure at this point. Now Blondie knows that the camera was hidden in his parents' house. It's slightly weird that they never went to check on it after they got the text. But in Gotham Knights, any plan that relies on stupidity will probably work. But it does mean they've got to break into an apartment in a skyscraper. Some of you already smoked if you think we we could pull off a heist like this. Yeah, because breaking into someone's apartment in a skyscraper is almost impossible. It's certainly not how we started the entire series in episode one. Then in episode two, you did it again. But this apartment, this one's impossible. We would need building plans and schematics. We'd need building plans because I'm sure his house is so complicated, it's like a maze in there. You get lost in his house, you'll never get out for weeks. And apparently schematics in general, anything will do. Tell me how you built your toaster and I'll break into his house. We already have them. We grabbed all of his designs when we researched them. No wonder you look annoyed, love. How did you not remember that? There's no way we can break into this apartment unless we've got the building plans. But we have them. Y you actually got them yourself last week. Oh, I guess that was handy then, wasn't it? <laughs> I don't know how I forgot about that. Don't you nod as if you'd just seen something amazing in it. Oh, she already got the plans. It's like she's precognitive. <laughs> but they see the mayor's celebration on TV, and it's live, so they know he's not in his house. He is married. They don't know whether his wife is still in the house. But they forget about that, and because they forget about it, it means it doesn't exist. If the writers didn't think about it, it didn't happen. He also doubles the reward to catch these people. At this point, it's probably worth the while to hand themselves in and just take the money. It's easily more money than they'd ever make in their lives. And let's be honest, far more than they're worth. 
worth. This is my angry face. What do you mean you've put a reward out on me, girl? If there ever a good time for a lamb to walk into a lion's den, do it when the lion's not home. Why are you the lambs in this scenario? You're supposed to be the superheroes. Oh, we're the Gotham Knights and we're gonna save the city. That's why we consider ourselves to be prey. Not even prey, the children of prey. You've basically just called Batman a sheep. So we go over to the mayor's celebration. Castiel comes over and confronts him. And the guy takes the piss. Not my fault you lost because you had a secret child. I'm just glad it wasn't with my wife. Although after what we find out about his wife later in the episode, it's amazing anything works at all. <laughs> Geriatric isn't the word. And he takes this opportunity not only just to laugh in his face, but also fire him as the DA. No one wants a two-faced womanizer protecting this city. I mean, it worked for Berlusconi. Also, never miss an opportunity to call him Two-Face. At this point, he's not going to need to choose his own name because everyone's already calling it him all the time anyway. My favorite thing about Gotham Knights is its subtlety. But at that moment, an extremely intimidating police officer comes and separates the two of them. You can tell he's intimidating when he's four foot two, and it allows the other two gentleman to stare over the top of his head. Thank you, officer, for breaking this up. You have provided an obstacle that I would have to step over to reach him. Thank you, officer. No problem. Dun, dun, dun. There can only be one 442 officer in this town, and we know who it is. It was all an excuse to set up in order to steal his wallet, so they can steal his door key to break into his house. Yeah, three minutes ago we had, we're never gonna break in there without schematics and a map. Yeah, you because you really needed that when you had his front door keys. Cut over to the skyscraper now. Security cameras are at 730 Megahertz. I mean, that's nice to know, but what use is it? Turn the radio on to 88.4 FM. That makes sense. Why do we care about CCTV cameras, though? Three minutes of empty elevator. Oh, yeah, he uses that to hack them. These CCTV cameras have such great security that the only thing you need to hack them is to work out what frequency they use, what Wi-Fi frequency they use. I'm so glad you got the schematics here, because your cameras have less security than my Wi-Fi router. Congratulations. But they turn off the motion sensors to the 40th floor, and when you see how complicated his house is, you can understand why they needed a map. Look, it's got six rooms. These people can only count to four. This is challenging for all of us. Either way, they grab the camera out of his hidey hole and realize if the camera's there, that means that Brody is in trouble. Either his parents have kidnapped him or he's offered to go to prison for five years for somebody else randomly and not told him. Probably a frequent occurrence. Problem is, they set off the alarms. I thought you disabled the motion sensors. I, I, I did. Have you considered doing it properly? I'm sorry, are you using me as bait? And we find out that Turner is as useful as ever. Security's headed your way now. <laughs> Cheers for the warning, mate. But these are professional security for the rich, and that means they know what they're doing. They got the firearms pulled, they're at range, and there's only one thing you do in this scenario. Hold it. Do not move. Yeah, you don't have to move, love. We'll do that for you. And so... Then let them know that we're here, okay? I'm just gonna go for my phone. They keep getting closer to them, because you know what range weapons are like. They actually work best when you're right next to somebody. Walks right up to them. At this point, I'm pretty sure he could boop her on the nose with it. Although the most stupid part of the entire scene has, has got to be this. Yeah, because that's gonna work, mate, innit? What proceeds is a fight that's as stupid as you probably think it is. It is two three-foot high school students taking out armed professional security guards. And when you're guarding the Court of Owls, you would have assumed their security would at least be special forces or something. She could even fight at the start of this series. That was about three weeks ago. Now she's a master of Kramaga or whatever it is. They take out the security without even breaking a sweat. You okay? <laughs> Been practicing. Even the writers realized how stupid that was. Uh, guys, how did she just do that? Uh, just, just say she's been practicing. Yeah, yeah. Been playing a lot of Tekken 2 recently. It, it really improved her reflexes. I mean, who has she been practicing with? Where has she been practicing? And what does she think that special forces security people will be doing? So we get basically the entire police force turn up on the doorstep within two seconds. There's one off the screen just driven past. There's nine police cars have turned up within three seconds of an alarm going off. With those kind of response times, how does any criminal do anything in Gotham. I thought these people were supposed to be terrible at their jobs. Either way, they've now got to escape. They can't go downwards, because that's where the police are. So Blondie comes up with one of the best plans she's ever had. What about the roof? What, you want to jump? I don't know about you good people, but I'm all for it. Even Turner's like, eh, it might work. I'm not sure I can convince them to get through with it though, but let's face it, it worked for Batman. And if it's good enough for Batman, it's good enough for the Bat Brats. That's my motto. Come on, Blondie, you can do it. I believe in you. Instead, they look at the buttons and go, oh look, N. That's a random letter. We should probably just go to that one. There is no reason why N would be a better selection than any of the other floors. They don't even know what it is. What about floor N? Why not? Could be literally anything. We have no idea what it is. Let's just go there, I guess. What's floor N? Exactly. If you don't know what it is, why would you go there? Let's find out. Have the schematics and the building plans. The entire point of the building plans is that you would know what things like floor N were. So they use the key card to go to it and end up on an abandoned floor. It looks like you stopped between floors 12 and 14. You mean floor 13? 
look, I did say they can't count past four. This is challenging for everybody. So N is the 13th floor. See, she nailed it. That's why they keep her around. The only one that can do maths. It's new. It's the 13th letter of the Greek alphabet. Does that really need a comment? Or does the pretentious, oh, look at her, she's so smart, combined with the adoring puppy face, is that good enough? They often skip the 13th floor in their high rises because renters thought it was bad luck. I hate to break this to the superstitious among you, but if you go from the 12th floor to the 14th floor, still the 13th floor, all you've done now is named it wrong. Skip the 13th floor in their high rises because renters thought it was bad luck. So would you be if your son was going to turn into a bat? In fact, in Gotham, superstition and paranoia are probably just good survival techniques. Okay, but even if you skip the number, doesn't the 14th floor just become the 13th floor? Thank you! I knew there was a reason why I liked you, mate. This is a guy that can take a number and add one to it, and it puts him significantly ahead of the other characters on this show, let me tell you that. What if Alan Wayne built a secret 13th floor to try all that bad luck? Then I would say he was an absolute moron. <laughs> Gonna go through all my skyscrapers, build a floor that nobody goes on or knows about, and isn't on the building plans for some reason, when the entire point of rent is, is that they don't want to be on the 13th floor, but one can exist. Explain why the motion sensors weren't deactivated. Activated. We were off by one, didn't account for a bonus floor. Why are you wiring motion sensors up to it? Wait, this building was built before motion sensors were. So whoever updated the security in the building wired up a floor that nobody knows exists. I'd say the plot thickens, but at this point, we're just in cement anyway. It's not thickened, it's impenetrable. <laughs> but at that moment, their comms cut out. Their comms worked on every single other floor in the entire building, but go to the 13th floor, suddenly everything's failed. I don't know, maybe superstitious bad luck interferes with communications now? <sighs> Of course, now the signal cuts out. Great timing. Just because a character comments on how coincidentally bad something is, doesn't mean you can get away with bad script writing. It doesn't improve it, it just means that you knew it was stupid and decided to do it anyway. Doubling down is not always a virtue, but these two are on an abandoned floor and that could only mean one thing. Let's just get it on, shall we? We are trying to escape from police that are invading the building right now, but you know, we've got some time to kill. We're trying to escape from the police, but I am starving. I could murder a tuna sandwich. But they get distracted when they find one of the coffins. Except this one has a bit of a surprise. Oh my god! There seems to be a zombie in it. And as everyone knows from the start of every zombie movie, if you find a zombie, let it out. It's only the end of the world, it'll be fine. So they hear Brody calling from inside there and think, okay, it's Brody, that's worth the apocalypse, and pop him out. I can only assume this series ends now with The Walking Dead. I never realised this was a prequel. But they're in even more trouble when security turns up, for absolutely no reason whatsoever. Or is it because of those motion sensors that run an abandoned floor? Over to the Joker now, and the Joker card that I thought would actually be a plot point. I should've known better than that, shouldn't I? It kept showing it and making a big deal about it the entire series. I was like, okay, there's definitely some kind of secret message in that Joker will be trying to tell us something. No, nope. even though we broke into a police station to steal it back. No, nope. instead, we just burned the thing. It was completely meaningless, and all the time we spent focusing on it, we th eh, who cares. It's rather amazing that my expectations for this show were so low, and I still managed to give them more credit than they deserved. Oh, it's fine, don't worry about it, they're just setting up a plot point for the future. Welcome to the plot point. Back in the house though, her mom's going mental. The job she'd done's fallen through and she's not getting the money anymore, because Turner escaped from the police. It's not really her fault, she did actually uphold her end, but this is the Court of Owls, so what do you expect? Instead, she tells Duella, go back to the Insufferables, get the watches, steal the watches, and we'll flog them outside Gotham. I mean, they're only Court of Owls watches. I'm sure they'll be just fine with you selling them outside the city. You need a new name and ID and clothes. And this is why Joella is a useless character now. Anything that made her a good character has just been sucked out of her in this episode. You cost a pretty penny right now. I know. That's why. Welcome to the exact opposite of Duella. Carried the series on her back for 11 episodes, introduced her mum, and she's just nothing immediately. It's amazing how one character can ruin another one so fast. Look, if you're afraid of going back there and facing judgement from your little runaway pals, you're getting soft. No, it's not facing judgement from them. At the end of the day, she's met them. Who would get out of the Gotham Knights and want to go back? I should know, I feel like that every week. Crap, I can't get them back, I tried every frequency. Oh, careful about that, mate, you might accidentally hack the security cameras again. Yeah, it's probably interference from that guy. Floor. How? Yeah, so every other floor in the entire building is fine, except the 13th one, because it doesn't have anything in it. Yeah, true interference with radio waves comes from nothing. If they just added a few sofas to the place, it'd work a treat. Or are you trying to tell me that the bad luck is interfering with the communications? I'd love to know. Given how superstitious Alan was, I'm guessing all his buildings have secret 13th floors. I'm sorry, what does that have to do with your previous sentence? I didn't cut that. He put those two things back to back as if they had something to do with each other. It'll be the gap floor interfering with the communications. They're in every building, you know. What? But 
but then he realizes that means they're in Wayne Tower. Over to Castiel, clearing out his desk, and he realizes I better prioritize the important stuff. The booze, especially a rare bottle of bourbon, with a note from Bruce to the man who will change Gotham forever because he's Two Face. It is funny as well how Batman, the greatest detective of all time, was actually best mates with Two Face, who had a second personality, and Batman never worked it out. <laughs> Literally investigating the Court of Owls, and he knows a guy working for them. <laughs> greatest detective of all time. Castiel, after going from Supernatural to Gotham Knights, I don't blame you at all. At that moment, though, he gets a call from Turner. That big red decline button's gotta be tempting right now. You're interrupting my rock bottom. I don't think he's interrupting it, he's more just making it worse. By what? Showing you that there's always a new low? <laughs> I thought it was the worst I could get, and then Turner phoned me. You could make any place on Earth more annoying by just adding Gotham Knights people. <laughs> but he tells Castiel about the 13th floors, and how that's how the Owls and Talon would have navigated through Wayne Tower, including surprising Bruce Wayne when he was there. Now this doesn't work. The way that you get to the 13th floor is via the lift, which not only means you've got to get to the lift in the first place, but that lift goes to every other floor. So it is no easier to get to any other floor via the 13th than it is just to go there directly. In fact, it adds a second stop off for no reason whatsoever. I also have no idea why Bruce Wayne, the greatest detective of all time, wouldn't know about the gap floor in his own building that his dad built, presumably would have told him about. Bruce would also have access to the actual plans. None of this makes any sense. He would have told his talent that that's how to move through Wayne without tripping security alarms. Firstly, even if there weren't any alarms on the 13th floor, there would have been on every other one. When you're getting into the lift, when you're getting out of the lift, when you're going onto any other floor. But secondly, as we already know from the other tower, there are motion sensors on the 13th floor. They get wired into the building. Bruce would have never seen him coming. The owls are in the house. That's a phrase we're just going to use every episode and then claim it means something different this week. Then it was, they're in our leadership. Now it's, they're in my building. <laughs> Can we just come up with what it means and stick with it, please? Alan Wayne's dying words were literal. Yeah, we'd already come to that conclusion before, when you thought it meant something else. But Castiel says, don't worry lads, I'll go to Wayne Tower to the 13th floor and try and find any evidence to clear you. As far as they know, it's just another empty floor that Talon went in to avoid security alarms, but apparently he'll have stored some evidence there specifically to prove them innocent for some reason. But no one's quite worked out yet, and never does. At that moment, for some reason, their comms kick back in. They're still on the same floor, in the same place. Now the comms work, magically. <laughs> Less magically, they're about to die. Security guards just found them, but luckily, Brody tackles him. We get a fight where Brody can suddenly now fight. No evidence or reason for that before, but now he's a master of it. So he takes out the first guard. I thought this space rock was supposed to make you immortal, but it seems to be some kind of super serum as well. You just take it and can immediately fight like an assassin. It's great. Unfortunately, he didn't think about the other security guard who just shoots him about 20 times. No! I don't know why you're bothered, love. You weren't when he was going to prison for five years for you. Oh no! Who am I going to use as a fall guy now? <laughs> I don't know, it just doesn't seem sincere to me with Blondie. Either way, the hacker, engineer, locksmith, bomb disposal expert knocks the other guy out. And Brody comes back to life. How are you alive? You're supposed to be a genius, love. Can you not put two and two together? We got this magic space rock that can bring people back from the dead, gave it to the Court of Owls, and somehow the Court of Owls' son has come back to life. Do we think these two things could be related in some way? Tune in next week where she might work it out. It's gonna take her at least seven days to kick that brain into gear. But they bring Brody back to the clock tower and for some reason can't be bothered to change his shirt. He's just walking around with the entire scene with holes in him. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's just bad manners. I thought your dad was bad. No, he is. But my mom's worse. Based economy. You know, he He's bad because he pretends to do all of this stuff, but actually, she's responsible for it all. He's just taking credit for her failures. Why does he want to take credit for this again? I've still not quite worked it out. But no, she's responsible for everything. Creating the court, Bruce Wayne's murder, taking out Cressida. It was all her decision. I mean, they seem to have forgotten that Cressida was standing in front of the husband, and he was the one that ordered her killed. But no, no, I mean, it's definitely him taking credit for her work, despite the fact that he's the one doing it all, and she's nowhere to be seen. But he has a heart to heart with Turner. I gave you so much crap. That you didn't know your father was Batman, and there I was, not realizing that my own parents were the most evil people on earth ruling the entire city. I mean, they squeezed the toothpaste from the middle, I should have known they were monsters. Sometimes parents keep secrets. Why are we looking at you with your puppy dog eyes when he says that? Yeah, my parents kept secrets. Hers didn't, she knew all of them. Instead we go, oh, I'm so proud. I don't even know why we've cut over to her. This has nothing to do with her. Especially as they seem to have dropped this love triangle. The trick is what we do once we know them. Well, when you found out yours, you turned into a criminal and went on the run from the police. If anything, the message here seems to be never find out secrets. Not sure if that's what you were going for. But they look at the video evidence that has been such a major part of the last few weeks and it's useless. The worst thing is, they knew it would have been worthless. But everyone's wearing masks. 
You can hear Lincoln's voice, but he could always say it's faked. But you knew that in advance. Turner knew that in advance. It was Turner's camera. He saw what the camera saw. He knew he had a mask on. If it was useless because they had a mask on, why are we even bothering to go after it in the first place? Two weeks ago, this was the thing that was guaranteed to prove you innocent. Now it's just useless. What a coincidence. It's the same as all the other evidence we've got. The McKillen ledger, Dr. Leviticus, and Electrum, it's all circumstantial. Everything we do is circumstantial. It's all a massive coincidence. It's almost like the writers don't know how to write anything because they prove that something... This is the most important thing we can ever do. The, we have to spend all week getting this. Oh, it's crap and it's useless. We have to get something else that's exactly the same next week. I understand that things like Supernatural had Monster of the Week. You can't drag out for an entire series getting all of these episodic things and then having them all be useless. You've literally wasted 10 weeks of my life. It proves that the court is real and what they've done, but- But it doesn't prove who they are. You don't need to prove who they are. You only need to prove that you didn't kill Batman. Even if you proved who they were, that still wouldn't prove that you didn't kill Batman. You need to prove that the Court of Owls killed Batman. I'm not a lawyer, but you are criminals. You're supposed to understand how this works. But Brody heard them talking. What a coincidence. And so it's time for another week where we go off after the most important thing that we can possibly do that will probably turn out to be circumstantial later. He overheard they were having a party and he knows the location. And so they're gonna go there. He says it's not the first party they've crashed, but last time when they crashed one, they said we can't actually stop them because there's so much security. If we try and take them on, we'll all die. They're in exactly the same situation now, except for some reason this time it's gonna work. Security not a problem this time, we'll just take them all out, it's fine. What a difference a week makes. So we cut over to the head honcho, the one who's actually responsible for everything, even though she doesn't do any of it. It really seems like she's just taking credit for her husband's work, to be honest. And you're just another woman taking credit for a man's work. And I don't know what that miserable expression's meant to be. It's kind of understandable though, when she's got CCTV footage of them breaking into her house and taking the lapel footage. Bearing in mind, the Gotham Knights have just told us it's useless, and she doesn't know that, but because the audience know it, it makes a look very stupid what she's about to do next. What would you like us to do? Nothing. I'll handle this myself. Yeah, and by handle it, she means she's gonna run away with her tail between her legs. She pitches this as the smart, intelligent, and brave thing to do. I just think it's the actions of somebody who's used to failing because they're crap at everything. Now, the Gotham Knights try to recruit Robin, but she gets caught halfway out the window by her mom. This isn't who I raised you to be. This is exactly who you raised me to be. Worse ought to be good. You raised me to be a vigilante that goes around the city beating up criminals. I've never seen that parental advice on mom's net. <laughs> I've watched you pull doubles at the hospital until you can barely stand. Yeah, but she's there fixing the broken bones that Batman gave people. <laughs> you are not the same. Because you believe every life in Gotham is worth saving, Mom, and I believe that too. Do you know what about the ones you throw off buildings? You know how many mothers I have to tell on the daily that their babies are no longer on this earth? Why do you- Oh, I'm sorry, love. I didn't realize you worked in one of those clinics. I think I'm doing this. If I can prevent one less grieving mother, father, or daughter- What about me? <laughs> Don't you understand? I feel sorry for the mothers, but that's what I'm trying to prevent. If I can stop one mother feeling that way, but it's- No, you don't understand. What about me? How quickly the mask falls, right? If you stop them feeling that way, then how will I feel superior from helping them? What a horrible person. What about my grief? It's not about you. We're talking about bigger things here, like the fate of a city, not your own self-obsessed egotism. Have you thought for one moment about what happens to me? No, because you're irrelevant and- I understand that you think the universe orbits your ass, but to everybody else, you're just some random person in a house. And quite frankly, I don't think anyone needs to care about you because you seem to be doing enough for the rest of us yourself. If I lose the most precious thing in my life... Uh, the thing you care most about is definitely yourself. But with that, Robin dives out the window. Over at Gotham Tower now, and Castiel has turned into an electrician. As you can see, the buttons go from 12 to 14. If only we had a floor N here, then this would be a lot simpler. Instead, Castiel opens up the panel, finds all the wires to the buttons, doesn't seem to realize that there isn't a button for floor 13, so there will be no wires that send you to floor 13. But he just jabs it with his screwdriver, and one starts blinking red, which obviously means we're going to floor 13 now, I guess. I do wonder if it's like another show where they said if you press 12 and 14 together, you go to floor 13, and he was just trying to short both of them at the same time, but, but let's be honest, after the Joker card fiasco, the writers won't even have thought about it that much. Back with the Scooby gang now, and they've got an excellent point. It's gonna be guarded like Fort Knox. Fort Knox, quite a bit of security, probably can't be taken down by one tiny little- If Carrie secures the perimeter, we- I guess this Fort Knox can be taken out by one person then. How are we gonna get in? Well, Carrie is gonna take out all of the guards around the perimeter. <laughs> Call me crazy, but that'll be where most of the guards are. But of course, at that moment, the Joker arrives. This time without a mum, so might be entertaining. I'm pretty sure you're not a part of we. Savage. I mean, of all the people to get insulted by, Blondie Locks has got to be the most humiliating. We are gonna unmask the court. Yeah, but you are also breaking into Fort Knox, and she's your best fighter. You stand 
find a far better chance of not dying if she's actually with you. What am I saying? Kick her out, kick her out, exclude her from everything. This might be the finale we've always wanted. Three, four of you plus little bird equals you guys dead. Like I said, it's a great plan. Full steam ahead, folks. This is our best opportunity yet. But as she's verging on tears, Brody turns up. You replace me with a jock? What is this, an esports team? I can't believe you've replaced me by somebody who kicks a football. Betty doesn't even know what CSGO is. But as her heart breaks at the realization that she's so easily replaced, I'm sure Brody and Turner will make a great pairing. They'll be visiting the library later today. She's left with no choice but to just go upstairs and steal the watches. <laughs> The weird thing is, she's stealing the watches just in public. Turner comes up, sees her stealing the watches, says nothing. You know, we're only fighting the Court of Owls, and those watches have helped us in the past. Yeah, don't worry, you can take them. Just make sure you sell them for more than 50 quid. Sure, we'll be fine. Really know how to make a girl feel missed. Why would he want you to feel missed? You're the one who left. The only welcome you should have received on your return is a big sign that just said, piss off, you skank. What do you expect? Your mom drugged me. What, what can I say? Like daughter, like mother, I guess. They obviously had the same taste in men. What are you talking about? Joel obviously doesn't realize why she was sent out to buy a washing machine. But what can I say? That passport isn't going to pay for itself. But he tells her of her mum's plan and apparently he was worth $10 million, which means getting captured now, he's worth $20 million. Dude, for that price, I'm surprised Castiel hasn't handed you in. <laughs> it is also weird that Castiel's second personality works for the Court of Owls and so would know how to easily capture Turner and hasn't. I guess he just didn't do it because it wasn't in the script. But he says, you can stay. You mean a lot to me. In a few hours, we'll have cleared our names. I've heard that before every week, which then turns out to be so circumstantial nonsense. You wouldn't have to run away with someone who only cares about themselves. I mean, talk to Robin, her mom's exactly the same. Seems like you guys are doing just fine without me. That doesn't make any sense. Largely because she's crying about it. I'm crying because I really want to stay and that's why I'm not gonna stay. <laughs> Turner really regretting he didn't put up that skank poster over at the Court of Owls now having a dinner party of all things with the leader of the Court of Owls drawing their attention. Only kidding, he's just the husband, of course he's not the one in charge. For that you require fallopian tubes. All those people with dangly bits, all they can do is take credit for somebody else's work. It's not often that I step out from the shadows to address you. I'm not sure why you've done it now to be honest. Once you've stepped out from the shadows, you can't step back into them because everyone knows who you are. Now I've seen the rest of the episode so I know what she's planning. But when you know that, not None of this makes sense. So they wrote this scene for the audience who didn't know what was coming, but when you watch the end of the episode and think back to it, it doesn't make any sense. But we don't care then because time's a straight line and no one has memories. We only need to worry about what makes sense in the moment. So we had a big speech at the start about how we're anti-tradition and looking back on the past. If you don't look backwards, you won't remember how our show doesn't make any sense because she tells them all, we're gonna have a big toast as tonight you all get a lectrum, you'll live forever. And I must congratulate my husband on becoming mayor of the city and leading us all into a new future. And while she recites the Court of Owls poem, Castiel reaches the 13th floor of Gotham Tower. For some reason, it's covered in candles, which are lit. I don't know why, it's got electricity and it's an empty floor. Why do we just keep candles burning 24 hours a day for absolutely no reason? I just really like the atmosphere. <laughs> but he finds the science experiments as she makes her next announcement. One talon is good, but more talon, more better. That's why we got the coffins of the old talons. The ones who served the owls in the past but ran out of the magic space metal. We gave them more magic space metal and now they're back. Even the one that was useless at the start of the series. You know, the guy who couldn't even open a door held closed by a high school student made of wood that his sword would go through. <laughs> oh, the show's bad, it really is. Uh <laughs> so as they're sitting there at the dining table, surrounded by deadly assassins, you have to wonder at what point they realize this isn't gonna go well for them. But she's still giving a speech. Oh, these talons have protected the court throughout the ages. I'm like, why are you lying to them? You're about to kill them in 30 seconds. So why has she carried on and done this speech? It doesn't make any sense. It's just done to mislead the audience. There's no reason for her as a character to be doing this. But never fear, the cretins are here. Perimeter secure. You're clear. What, you managed to take out all of the guards? Or did you just turn up, look over a balcony and went, looks clear to me, mate. Doesn't seem like this party's guarded at all, actually. <laughs> of course, the three stooges are marching down a corridor, see two guards, quickly defeat the guards. Security's down. There was only two of them, mate. At the last party, you said there's so much security, we can't actually cause a fight. Now you take two guards down, you're like, that's it. There's not going to be any more. There wasn't any on the perimeter. There's two on the inside. Jobs are good. And if this is your security, I think I could take down the Court of Owls. Now, for some reason, the two fancy women is together and they're walking down a different corridor, which is definitely the same corridor we've just seen. They receive a message to rendezvous at the same point and they're like, okay, so why did you separate off to begin with then? You haven't fought anyone. You haven't taken any different guards, but for some reason, they sent you down a different corridor. Oh yeah, it's just so they could get it on in private. Really should have seen that one coming, shouldn't I? How are we going to make an excuse for these two to get together. Just say that the scent of blood in the air does it 
for him, I guess. Ready to spoil dinner? Wow, you really are savage. You just get with someone and the first thing they tell you is, oh, I bet you're gonna spoil tonight. I'm glad you've got such confidence in her love. But this is it. The moment has arrived. The showdown between husband and wife. Says you resurrected the talons and you didn't even consult me. She just looked remarkably pleased at the idea. <laughs> and trust you with another secret? That's a very odd reply. She blames him for losing the lapel camera, even though that's not his fault. He didn't even know where the lapel camera was. Not really his job to either. She's the leader. It's her fault if something happens. You've already proven how careless you are with matters of the court. There was a break-in. Yeah, into your house. You're the boss. That makes the house yours. Your security failed. And footage of the murder. Footage of the court. Your court. Your house. Your security. Who? If you have to ask, then you're even more stupid. Stupid than I thought. I can't believe she's just done the meme. You're putting memes into your script and you don't even realize. <sighs> What's the problem? Well, if you don't know, I'm not gonna tell you. Is the universal way of summarizing someone who's completely insufferable and doesn't even know they are. Somebody who's so thick they can't even put into words the reason why they feel the way they feel. Not that anybody should care how they feel in the first place, if they're that stupid. Perfect personification of the useless waste of space that everybody should avoid. Desperately trying to drag everyone else down with them for their own failings. I'd rest resurrected the talents to take care of Stephanie Brown and her friends. Well, that was stupid of you, wasn't it? So we had a talon who couldn't even defeat the Gotham Knights, so I decided to resurrect him again and send him after the Gotham Knights. If at first you don't succeed, if you keep trying the same plan, you're probably an idiot. But them stealing your morbid little keepsake. <sighs> Wasn't his morbid little keepsake. You don't even know what you're talking about. He didn't keep anything. His son hid it there and nobody knew where it was. But while this is going on, he's like, oh, I feel, oh, oh, I'm gonna, I need, I, I think I need some oxygen. First, you're like, that's understandable, mate. I feel exactly the same with that annoying little whining sound in your ear at all times. You got any of those talents spare? I think I've got a job for him. After an act, a contingency. Yeah, the contingency is poisoning him. Her plan, her great master plan, the genius that she is, is, oh no, they found out about the Court of Owls, better burn it to the ground and run away with my tail between my legs, because that's what great leaders do. Oh no, I've got caught, better start from scratch again, which she says later she's done dozens of times. She is such a massive failure that she's failed dozens of times to even do the most basic of things, like arrest a few high school students. What's our contingency? Not ours, mine. No, well, if it's yours, it's definitely gonna fail. No wonder you want other people as frontmen, because everything that you do falls to pieces. What are you talking about? Well, it won't be long. Uh-oh. The poison kicks in, and despite the fact that he's collapsing onto the floor, it does take him quite a long time to realize what's going on. I need to erase my involvement with the organization entirely. And she's gonna do that by erasing everybody else. Although I can't help but feel the real reason why she's wiping everyone out is because deep down she knows the truth and doesn't want anyone else to point out how much of a failure she is. What did you do to me? Well, considering that you can't stand and you're staggering all over the place, either you've been poisoned or that wine was really strong. What I always do, Lincoln. <gasps> what fail? What needs to be done. How often do you need to fail? I mean, I understand you've been spending your infinite lifetime mastering it, which would explain how successful you are at it. I just don't know why it would be useful. But she says, once we got the Electrum, I needed to change course. I didn't need you anymore. Got a new fancy man. <laughs> Wait, I don't know why I assumed you could control a city when you couldn't even control your own son. I don't know why you think you can control a city when you can't even control a few teenagers. And besides, you can't control your own son. He's also your son, which you couldn't control. If we're going to have the villain of the piece preaching, can they at least be like semi-intelligent. Please. You can't have them just blaming everyone else for their own failures because they look like an idiot. But if they're an idiot that's supposed to be the most intelligent criminal in all of Gotham, it makes everybody else in the entire world look like an idiot. So he collapses on the floor. You poisoned me. Like I said, he's a bit slow on the uptake. He says, it's no use. I have Electrum in me. I can't die. And she says, yes, but you won't need to. It will knock you out long enough for them to discover you as the leader of the Court of Owls, realize you're dead, and bury you. After that, I don't think anyone will hear the knocking or your attack to set the record straight. You're pure evil. And you're just another man taking credit for a woman's work. <laughs> I don't know how many times I've seen that now. It never gets old. I've even filmed this entire video previously. I filmed it yesterday. The audio was popping. That's why the video wasn't out. I've had to redo all of it. Still my favorite part of the entire series. It shows she has absolutely zero self-awareness. She's done nothing in the entire series. Achieved nothing. But if she wants to take all the credit, then all of the failures are her failures because she was the one who actually decided to do all of those things that did nothing. You're just taking credit for my work. No, he was the one actually out there 
they're doing things. Whereas you just sat at home watching Netflix going, yes, I actually rule the world, thank you. And yet you couldn't even keep your own son in line. And the more smug you are about it, the more incompetent you look. But it turns out Gastiel has discovered the science experiment complete with spinny thing. Oh, spinny thing. The Gotham Knights finally meet up. There's no guards to be seen. They don't think that's suspicious. They just walk in on the party, which is an array of corpses. Quite gruesome corpses, actually, which is why I can't show you them. Considering this is a CW show, they do actually nail the atmosphere of the scene. It's tired, rare praise, but in a show like this, I will take even the low-hanging fruit at this point. Previously, everything's just been rotting on the floor. Who did this? Who do you think? Oh, it's probably the Gotham PD. <laughs> because he should know. He's already told you who's in charge. I thought this whole thing was about them taking over the world, not saying goodbye to it. Yeah, but that was when a man was in charge, dear. That's when you had reasonable, logical plans. Instead of, you're just trying to take credit for a woman's work. And don't forget, if you don't know what it is, then I'm not going to tell you. That's how you go from a successful crime organization that can rule an entire city, to one where everybody's dead, with the leader running away, blaming everyone but herself for her own actions. All I'm saying is it was better when the husband was in charge. Because at that moment, they spot Brody's father. Brody, I'm so sorry. Look, after being married to that, I'm sorry for Brody and his father. Blondie looks on as, oh, well, one day that's gonna be me. I'm gonna be an insufferable crime boss who blames everyone else for my own actions as well. I've been inspired. If you can see it, you can be it. We need to find my mother. Said no one ever. I mean, at this point, we might as well go full vampire diaries and dump her at the bottom of the ocean. But Castiel's going through newspaper clippings, and he finds his fancy woman is actually a scientist who's lived forever. Although it does seem to give him a rather intense reaction. <sighs> Calm down, mate. She's not under the desk. Unfortunately for the Gotham Knights, the GCPD turn up in a helicopter. SWAT teams pour out, raid the entire place with laser sights. Now, as you can see, they are sweeping each other with their own rifles. <laughs> this guy seems to be about to shoot his friend in the arse. <laughs> What can I say? That green light is going to be very surprised in a second. But the Gotham Knights hear them too late. They try to escape, but it's too late. They're already here and they get caught. This is my oh no face. I know, it looks like all of his other faces. 12 episodes in, I think I'm beginning to be able to spot the nuance. But as Gotham's finding out exactly what his fancy woman's been up to over the last thousand years, he learns everything about finding the magic space rock. Rare new mineral that she believes holds the secret to immortality. Apparently, everybody knew about the magic space rock and its immortal powers, so much so it was in the local news newspaper. Nobody got interested in that? No? Okay. Who would care about infinite life? I'm sure people wouldn't try and take it from you. I'm also not sure why they use the word thinks. We've already proved in this series if you just hold it to a wound it heals it. How many experiments do you need? But it turns out that Alan Wayne was also interested in it. Engaged in fact. Come on Castiel, you've come from Supernatural, you can do better than sloppy seconds. But then he hears her behind him. Here I thought Lincoln was the other man. No, he was her husband. You were the other man. He was the man. Emphasis on was, I guess. Turns out it was Bruce Wayne's uh, great-great-grandfather. Well, surely you're not gonna hold that against her. Admittedly, he's a little young for her, but it is 2023 after all. The owls really were in the house. They were so proud of that plot point, so they told you twice. Here I am, cringing at the first one, in episode three. Owls never build their own nests. That's the most stupid way to run a criminal organization. No wonder yours collapsed. What should we do for strategy against the police? Well, let's have a look what owls do, shall we? Yeah, they take somebody else's nest and spruce it up or just or just live inside a tree. Yeah, but do you think that'll work for a human criminal organization? Well, I don't know, but I've commissioned all of these owl masks now. I don't think we I don't feel like we've got any choice. We called ourselves the Court of Owls, obviously. Every action that we do must be inspired by owls. What do you do, eat rats? I know what you're thinking, I don't look a day over 200. Look, you said it, not me. But yes, let's be honest. We were all thinking it. How is any of this possible? Well, you're in Gotham Knights with a magic space rock, so magic. Over a century ago. I discovered magic. I discovered a medical marvel. Magic. But she says, it took me a decade, but eventually I found a way to live forever. Castiel's seen through it though. How many innocent people had to die just so you could live forever? What do a few lives matter? Yeah, when I'm the result of it, because I'm so amazing. And if you can't understand why that is Castiel, then I'm not gonna tell you. This was never about anyone other than yourself. This was about power. Based economy. Your face when a man tells you the truth. <laughs> but she says, Castiel, I love you. We were trying to set you up so that you could go to prison for the rest of your life. But then I fell in love with you and so I decided to get rid of my husband instead. You can be my new husband until I find someone better than you. I mean, look, with an offer like that, who wouldn't want a 500 year old? Like I say, geriatric isn't the word. So I did what I always do. I Cheated, betrayed my husband, let down my son. Seriously, Turner, when are we gonna get that skank poster? Pivoted. Okay. 
I've never heard it called that before. If anything, that's something you might try drawing. I've started over dozens of times. A new name. Persona. I just keep failing my entire life. I've lived forever. But for some reason, the person who's most useless in the entire universe is the one that's living forever. And so I'm going through the centuries, failing repeatedly and blaming everyone else for it. Everything burns down and I need a new name. I need a new passport. I've got to start again with a new family. And every time I try everything, it always fails. I can't believe I'm always surrounded by people so incompetent. Couldn't be me. But always alone. It's because nobody wants you. They want someone who can at least work out how to put the kettle on. I don't want it to be that way anymore. Have you considered learning how to become competent at something and not blaming everyone else for your own failures? But she says you could start over with me, Harvey. Look at me. I'm an evil murderer that's just killed my entire family. We could be together. Who wouldn't want that? Look at my crazy eyes. You know you want to. Even Harvey's like, you are weird and creepy and even Batwoman would be an improvement at the moment. Start over and wield the power you deserve. It's always about power with Hollywood. They just see the entire world as a battle between people for power. The Rebecca I loved was a mirage. Oh my god, I can't believe you said that to me. Why didn't you want an evil murderer as your wife? I killed my last husband for you, what more do you want? At no point have they said a side effect of The Rock is that you lose IQ points over time. There's no part of me that could ever love someone as cruel and twisted as you. Based economy. Castiel has finally grown up and evolved into thug life. Are you sure about that? Yeah, because she's not the kind of person that takes no for an answer. That's a skill she had to develop over time because she heard it so often. But he gets dragged off by two security guards because I'm guessing while he may not be a fan of her, his other half is... Oh, that is some ultimate crazy eyes. Houston, we have a winner. So we get the Gotham Knights going to prison. This guy gets sent through the police station. He looks over, spots the guy he kept giving coffee to, who says this. That was been impersonating the badge for weeks. How do you know? He's only just been arrested and he doesn't look anything like the guy that you know. So unless as he was getting arrested and carried back, he's like, by the way, something you might want to add is I have been in your police station a lot. Yeah, yeah, I know that you don't know any of that, but if you want to add another crime to it, I might as well just confess now. Because they are not recognizable just when you see the pair of them. Either way, they all get put into the only cell that seems to be in this police station. It's the same one as last time, and they all get put in together for some reason. We should have run when we had the chance. Yeah, but that advice would only be useful if you heard it before you signed the contract to be in this show. Now it's far too late. Of course, Joker's daughter sees them on the TV and realizes I have to help. Even little bird. I don't know why she suddenly cares about Robin. She never has before. But when she tells her mom she's leaving, she's having none of it. I love you and it's so great that you're going out to help your friends. Followed by quickly knocking her out because she's worth so much money, I can't let you go. And she's gonna turn her in for the 20 million. He's so good. It is bizarre how they've let this character just destroy Duella's one. We've gone from carrying the series to being just as bad as the rest of them in one episode. And the leader who fails at everything has come up with a new plan, presumably. So she can fail at that one as well. And she sends the Talons off to the GCPD to take out the Gotham Knights in the cell. I'm sure that'll go down a treat. But I am astonished that in this episode you were so proud. This was your massive climax. You got one of the major villains, wiped him out, and had your bigger villain be even more smug that haha, I've got one over on you. And for that, you chose a moment that was so bad, introduced such backlash in Batwoman that it got cut out and you thought, well, we've already done it once this series, we might as well double down. And even though I've had to record this review twice, I still kind of feel the same way. I'm kind of impressed. There's a certain level of self-awareness you must have to understand that what you make is complete and utter trash before you've even made it. As they were writing this show, they must have known they only had one series and thought we will burn it to the ground on the way there. We are going to make a TV series including all of the horrible bits that we couldn't put in Batwoman into one giant smorgasbord of trash. And if that is what they want their penultimate ever episode to be, then I can't wait for the finale. Because not only will it be the last ever episode of Gotham Knights. But it looks like they want to burn the entire thing to the ground on the way out. <laughs> and honestly, I'm here for it. But those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you liked the video. Subscribe for more videos like this in the future. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.